Poiseuille's formula for fluid flow. So if a liquid is flowing at a steady flow in a tube such as this one, the volume of the liquid that is issuing out or that is flowing out per second is going to be affected by three things. First of all, the volume flow rate, which we are representing here as volume divided that by time, is going to be affected by the viscosity of the liquid. The volume flow rate is also going to be affected by the radius of the pipe in which it is flowing. And the volume flow rate will also be affected by the pressure gradient as the fluid is flowing through. And the pressure gradient, in this case, we are talking about pressure. P, this is standing for pressure difference, divide that by the length. This L stands for the length of the pipe. Pressure gradient is simply the change in pressure of a liquid in a tube of one meter. The change in pressure being P2 minus P1, which is represented by P, divide that by the length of the tube, which is L. So it means that that we mean by pressure gradient, the change in pressure of a liquid in a tube of one meter. So when we are talking about steady flow of a liquid, through a tube like that, according to Poiseuille's formula, it is such that this steady flow is affected by these three factors, which is the radius, the pressure gradient, and we have the viscosity. Now combining these three gives us something like that, that uh, um, volume flow rate, the rate at which that fluid is flowing at steady state condition, is directly proportional to the coefficient of viscosity, the radius of the pipe, and the pressure gradient. Now, this to remove this um, proportionality sign, we introduce a constant of proportionality which we have called k, and uh, this gives us coefficient of viscosity to the power x, r to the power y, and this to the power z. And now we need to find out what the value of x, y, and z are. And after finding out the value of x, y, and z are, then we write the proper formula for this. So we are going to use dimensions to find the values of x, y, and z so that we end up finding the correct equation for this thing. So we'll begin. So using dimensional analysis, we know that uh, we, we need to find the dimensions of v. Divide that by the vi dimensions of time is going to give us k. Now k, since k is constant, it means it is dimensionless. Of course, this coefficient of viscosity uh, to the power x uh, has dimensions times r to the power y multiply that by uh, the dimensions of p divide that by the dimensions of l which is the length and this is all to the power z so we have the power z up there and the power z up there so we continue so of course this is volume. Volume is L to the power 3. So this is L to the power 3. Divide that by the dimensions of time is capital T, which is time. That is going to be equal to uh, the dimensions of the coefficient of viscosity. Now, to get the dimensions of uh, coefficient of viscosity, we are going to have to do some side work. We all know that coefficient of viscosity by definition is given by uh, force divide that by area times the velocity gradient so force is given by mass times acceleration divide that by cross-sectional area this is area times the velocity gradient v2 minus v1 over l so let's get to the dimensions of mass dimensions of mass is capital m multiply that the dimensions of acceleration is given by L T to the power negative 2 because acceleration is given by velocity over time which is L T to the power negative 2 divided by that by area which is L squared multiply that by um, change in velocity V2 minus V1 gives us velocity velocity is L T to the power negative 1 divide that by L L is the length is L like that so we know that this L will go with that L and then we shall end up here with M L T to the power negative 2 divide that by L squared multiply that by T to the power negative 1 and then to make this all universal 
um, we have M, we have L up here and L, the laws of indices, this is 1 minus 2, this gives us L to the power 1 minus 2, which gives us negative 1, then we have capital T here, the law of indices, T, when you divide indices of the same base, you subtract the powers negative 2 minus negative 1, this gives us negative 2 plus 1, which is gives us negative 1, so this is the dimensions of uh, the dimensions of this um, I, I have I have a separate video on how to find dimensions of quantities I'll put the link in the description below so back to what we were doing this the dimensions of this are we have M L to the power negative 1 T to the power negative 1 and those are the dimensions of the coefficient of viscosity to the power X multiply that by r r is l to the power y because r is radius it's a length and then uh, we have also pressure pressure gradient of course now pressure over l let's summarize it and get, bring one thing here again we're going to do some side work for p over l so we have pressure over the length the pressure we know that pressure is given by force over area that is pressure divide that by L the length now we all know that force is given by mass times acceleration divide that by area all this is divide that by the length so finding the dimensions of mass is capital M dimensions of acceleration is L T to the power negative 2 divide that by the dimensions of area that is going to give us L squared and all this we divide all this by L the length of the pipe so we simply uh, simplify this this becomes M L T to the power negative 2 uh, over L uh, multiply that by 1 over L this L cancels with that L and you end up with um, your answer as m this is l to the power negative 2 m l to the power negative 2 then you have uh, t to the power negative 2 so those are the dimensions of p over l so this is going to become m l to the power negative 2 t to the power negative 2 and this is to the power z so from this we have something like this we have l to the power 3 t this is to the power negative 1 is equal to capital m l to the power negative 1 t to the power negative 1 this is to the power x multiply that by l to the power y multiply that by m l to the power negative 2 t to the power negative 2 and this is to the power z so let's compare the powers. We start equating the corresponding indices. Now let's look at the indices where we're having for those of M. You look at M on this side of the equation and that side of the equation. So when it comes to M, this way there is nothing. So zero is going to be equal to, let's look at M this side of the equation. We have X, um, then we have another M here. It is to the power Z. So it's going to become X plus z that's equation one then let's get to l let's equate the indices for l when you get to l this side of the equation we have l to the power three so we have three there so it's going to become three it's going to be equal to when you come to l this side we have l to the power negative one negative one times x gives us negative x then you have l here to the power y so it's one times y which is y plus y then we have another L here to the power negative 2, negative 2 times Z is going to be minus 2Z. That's another equation 2. Then you come to the to T. You put the indices of T. And uh, for T, we look at uh, this side of the equation. T has negative 1 this way. Negative 1 is going to be equal to T this way is negative 1 times X is going to become uh, negative X. That's going to give us... Uh, then t here negative 2 plus z actually it is 
negative 2z so it's minus 2z so is with, with with negative 1 is going to be negative x minus 2z giving us the third equation so you're going to solve these two these three equations simultaneously to get the values of x y and z to cut the long story short if you look at uh, you look at uh, equation 1 and equation 3 and you solve them you're going to get negative z as 1 and then um, from equation 1 after getting z as 1 you'll find that your value of x will be equal to negative 1 then again when you continue from equation 2 you'll be able to get to after substituting you'll get your value of y as 4 so after getting these solving those three equations simultaneously so this becomes volume flow rate v over t becomes the constant k times this is to the power negative 1 the value of x here is negative 1 multiply that by r r is uh, y y is to the power 4 multiply that by the pressure gradient p over l and this p over l to the is to the power z which is 1 so now when you when experiments were held it was found that the value of k was equivalent to pi over 8 therefore this expression is becomes v over t is going to give us a value of k which is pi over 8 multiply that by the coefficient of viscosity to the power 1 multiply that by r to the power 4 times the pressure gradient to the power 1 so this becomes uh, if you're to rearrange this equation uh, this v over t is going to become v over t is going to be equal to pi r to the power 4 times p p being the the, the the difference in pressure divide that by 8 times the coefficient of viscosity times times l and in this case p is simply the change in pressure that is p2 minus p1 now this expression the uh, showing the volume flow rate being equal to this is what we are calling Poiseuille's formula and uh, it only applies for steady flow or call it laminar flow in liquids this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe for Xemu Academy, this is Anwar Rangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.